Let's conclude with mixins and let's add custom commands to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom commands to Minecraft using basically the mixin that we've done last tutorial. I highly recommend checking this out. Now, you can basically take a look at this tutorial as well without taking a look at the mixin, but the specific commands that we're going to do require the mixin. So, I highly recommend checking this out. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to start by creating the two commands. So what is going to happen here is we're going to go into our package and we're going to create a new package. So right click new package called the man package. And then inside of there, we're going to create two new classes. One of them is going to be the set home command class and the other one right click once again is going to be the return home command class. Now I will be copying over most of the code here. Everything there is of course available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual just as well as we're basically well into the more advanced topics at this point, you know, if you see something like, I don't know, like an int array, this shouldn't be crazy to you. You should pretty much know at least a little bit of Java at this point, as we're basically going into the more advanced stuff. I will, however, try and well, basically explain all of the code as best I can. So let's do the following. I'm going to basically do the return home command first. So you can see we have two static methods, the register method right here and the run method. The register method will be called in just a moment when we're actually going to register this command. So this is important for registering the command. And the run method in this case is the specific thing that is executed when we are actually basically going to execute this command. So you can see inside of the register method that we have this command literal home and then the literal return and then executes. What is this craziness? Well, a general idea is that what I have to put into the console is slash home. And when we then call the then with another literal, we have to make another word return. So we're going to basically put this in slash home return. And then the return home command run method is executed. So then everything here is basically being run. You could in theory put any code in here that you want. So this is really cool. But that is the general idea on how to build this. Right now we can actually take a look at the command manager this is it so in here you can basically see all of the vanilla commands that are available and you can even go into them so for example we might have something like the you know enchant command middle mouse button click on this and then you can see bam here is the execute method so this is the method that gets executed when we put in you can see slash enchant and then you can see there are some different types of arguments so this is the building of the argument you can see it's very very long and most of these commands are quite complicated. So if you have a certain command that might get very complicated, well, this is the idea. You can basically take a look at this. I can highly recommend taking a look at the vanilla examples here. This is the best resources on how the commands are built, how they work, how to use them. And there's pretty much almost nothing else to say about this. So our run method right here, as you can see, uses the I entity data saver interface, just like we've done in the last tutorial. So we're casting the player into this interface so that we have access to the get persistent data method. And when we have access to this, then we can save some data there. So you can see I'm saving the home position here. Uh, basically, I'm getting the home position. I'm checking, hey, is this, you know, unequal to null? Because then we know, okay, then we have, have actually something written in there. This is actually zero, sorry, not null, it's actually zero. Then we can say, hey, no home position has been set. Okay, fair enough. And then if there is a home position, then we're basically reading it out again, making sure that, hey, we want to teleport the player exactly to this position. And then we're just going to send the feedback once again, player returned home. That's all there is to it, basically, uh, overall. And, well, the set home command is even, well, easier in a lot of ways. It's pretty much the same thing. So what happens here is, once again, of course, the register method with home, in this case, set. So we have to put in slash home and then space set. And then the run command here executes once again. We're basically just going to say, you know, we're going to get the player once again cast into this interface. We're then going to get the position. Then, then we're going to save the position in a string here. This is just needed so that we can, you know, properly basically output it. So that it's a little nicer. And then here we're just putting in an int array under the name home pass. So exactly the thing that is read out right here. And we're saving the three X, Y and Z coordinates of the, well, basically the new home. And that is pretty much all that there is to it. So when it comes to the actual saving of the 
commands or the registering of the commands. So this is going to happen or we're going to do this in our model registries class. Now you could, of course, also do this in, you know, any other class. So basically in the tutorial mod right here in the on initialize method, you could also do this. We're going to do it right here. So we're going to have a private static void, static void or register commands method. This is the generic way of basically registering a command. How do you register a command? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to say command registration callback dot event dot register. And then we're going to call the set home command colon colon register. That's it. Then we're going to duplicate this with control D. And then we're going to change this to the return home command. And there you go. Making sure that the register method right here in your, you know, command class has exactly these two parameters. Right, so you need the command dispatcher of type server command source. Well, I mean, it doesn't need to be called dispatcher, but you know, it makes sense. And you need a Boolean right here. This has to be the basically the correct method signature. Otherwise, this does not work. So beware of that. And then what we can do is we can call the register commands right here. And then the commands are registered. Now they would, in theory, work. And this would already work fine. However, there is one more thing that we actually need to do in order for this to properly work. Now, the reason is that we have, you know, made this uh, mix in here that wrote and read the NBT data. However, the issue is that this does not happen when the player dies, for example. So if the player dies, then what happens is that these methods are not actually called. There's a different types of methods that are called and we actually have to now use an event for this. So this is also a little bit, you know, taking a look at how events work. So in our tutorial mod package, right click new package called event. And then inside of there, we're going to make a new class called the mod player event copy from very long name, pretty craziness. And this is going to implement the server player events. And then you can see it already says copy from yes, this is exactly the event that we want to basically implement here. We're going to hover over this implement methods this is the copy from player method. And this method then here is called basically when we're copying from another player. So I can middle mouse button click on this, you can see called when the player data is copied to a new player. This usually happens when the player dies. That's the general idea. And I'm actually just going to copy over the contents because it is very straightforward. We have an old player, which is the original. We have a new player, which is the player. This then simply gets the in area of home pass from the original player. That's all that there is to it. And this just has to happen because when the player dies, then the home pass would be deleted, which is of course something that we don't want to happen. Therefore, we need this, this event here. And we also have to register this event. So this once again will happen in the mod registries. So this is going to be the private static void register events method right here events, there you go. And this is going to call the server player events dot copy from very important that we choose the uh, this field here that is all caps dot register, and then just a new mod player event copy from there you go. And that is it. Now, of course, also call this right here, register, not the commands one. We actually want to register events. There you go. And that would be pretty much all that we need to do. So this is one example of the events as well. We can actually take a look at this as well. So this is the server player events. We have the copy from after respawn allow death. So some interesting events right here. And I believe we can take a look at the events class, not the API status, but this one. And you can see that this is used in some different types of events. And those would be basically the events that you could also use, well, in your game and in your mod, basically, making sure that you can basically, you know, do a bunch of stuff. You have some server tick events, some lifecycle events, server entity events. Uh, Fabric actually has quite a few events. Uh, it doesn't have as many as Forge, though that is true. Right, so overall, this is pretty much all of the things that we need to do. So you can see there are quite a few steps and it's definitely very interwoven with the mixin because of course we need the I entity data saver. Otherwise, we couldn't save the persistent data here. This is very important. Therefore, you know, it's sort of a, a two parter in that case. But whatever the case may be, you know, we've added everything that we need. So let's see if it works. All right, we find ourselves back in Minecraft. So let's try and see if we get the suggested home. So we have the home everything working here. Let's first of all try a home return and we should get the, uh, you know, no home specified. Basically, no home position has been set. That's very good. You know, instead of basically the game crashing, which would be, well, not ideal. Let's do home set right here. So you can see the home has been set right here. And this is vaguely the correct well position. Then let's just fly somewhere else and let's say home return. And we have returned home exactly where we were before. 
Now let's also try and just fall from a very high height and then there you go. Let's respawn and then we can say home return and we have returned home once more. So this also works. Now let's also for, you know, the sake of argument, let's, you know, go out of the world and let's go back in and see if this also works. But I am very, very, well, I'm very confident that this will work home return. And there we go. We have returned home once again. So everything working totally fine. Our two methods or our two commands are, well, perfectly implemented exactly how you would expect them to. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah. <laughs>